thank you. The next item of business is consideration of motions 8469 and 8470 in the name of Hamza Youssef on appointment of Scottish Ministers and Junior Scottish Ministers. And can I ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to please press their request to speak buttons now. And I call on Hamza Youssef to speak to and move the motions up to 12 minutes, First Minister. Thank you uh, very much, Presiding Officer. And I'll begin by moving the motion in my name, which I ask that Parliament agrees to the appointment of four new Scottish ministers and eight new junior Scottish ministers. Before going any further, I want to take the opportunity to pay tribute to the ministers who are leaving the government. Keith Brown has been a key figure in the SNP government over many, many years. Among his notable achievements, he has been a champion of the Fair Work Agenda and also worked hard to support and to reassure businesses in the wake of the Brexit referendum. His work in the upcoming uh, Criminal Justice Reform Bill will see a sea change in the support available for the victims of crime. I also want to highlight his admirable work on behalf of veterans uh, of our armed services and indeed their families. Uh, ben McPherson has served effectively in a number of posts over the last five years. Most recently, he's played a key role in the continued rollout of Scotland's social security system. But he also covered a wide range of portfolios, which is testament to his breadth of experience. Claire Hockey has worked tirelessly to improve the lives of children and young people. She was the driving force behind the government's efforts to support those affected by cruel historic forced adoption practices, culminating in the former First Minister's formal apology just last week. Ivan McKee has relentlessly promoted Scotland as a place to do business and invest, and I think we all would recognise and pay tribute to the role that he played, the key role he played, in helping vital supply chains during the height of the global pandemic. And meanwhile, as <coughs> excuse me, all of you may have seen, uh, Kate Forbes and I have spent quite a lot of time with each other over the last few weeks. Since the leadership contest ended, she and I have had some long chats about what contribution she could make to the new government. And despite some suggestions to the contrary, they have, as she has said, been very cordial, very warm and very positive. What many people won't have seen is that behind the scenes, as we travelled across the country, Kate, Ash and I and our respective families got on far more happily than may have been suggested. Kate is a tremendous, tremendously talented politician. I know that she will continue to make a formidable contribution to this parliament and particularly on behalf of her constituents. I'm sorry to see her leave government for now, but I have no doubt and sincerely hope that she will return to ministerial office at some point soon. Finally, presiding officer, there are two other departing cabinet members whom I must pay tribute to. In Nicola Sturgeon, Scotland has had one of the most able and effective politicians across the UK in decades. And for those of us following in her cabinet footsteps, she has provided a masterclass in leadership. John Swinney, he's been a rock in the Scottish Government since 2007, and behind the scenes, he's always been a cool and wise head around the Cabinet table. Many of us, many of us, uh, have often gone to him uh, for advice. In fact, all of us, I suspect, who are in Cabinet at some point uh, or another. When it comes to First Minister's questions, uh, they know all the tricks of the trade, so it's fair to say I am slightly dreading that first week when I look at the business bulletin and see the name Sturgeon or Swinney in the list of backbench questioners to come. I do wish uh, Nicola, John and all the other departing ministers all the very best for the future. Uh, needless to say, having such a formidable array of talent on the SNP backbenches is an enormous asset for me and my government. Let me now turn to the new appointments. I think that even the SNP's harshest critics would agree this is a very different ministerial team to the one it replaces. Out of 28 ministerial posts, only six positions remain unchanged. The cabinet I'm proposing will have 10 members, six women and four men. It will therefore have a higher proportion of women than the previous Scottish Cabinet. By average age, it will also have the youngest Cabinet Scotland has ever had, five members of the Cabinet under the age of 40. It is a refreshed lineup for a new era of government, and as we look to the challenges of the future, it is very much a changing of the guard. The balance of portfolios reflect the key priority areas that I have set, protecting people from the cost crisis, enabling our NHS and public services to recover, supporting a net zero wellbeing economy and improving, of course, the life chances of people 
the length and breadth of the country. Firstly, although her appointment does not uh, require approval, I am delighted that Shona Robinson has agreed to serve as Deputy First Minister uh, and, indeed, Cabinet Secretary for Finance. In her long years in government, Shona has been a driving force behind the delivery of the Commonwealth Games, and as Health Secretary, she championed the interests of both patients and staff. And most recently, of course, she delivered a significant rollout of that game-changing Scottish child payment. She will now bring her experience and skills to her new role, responsible not only for the budget and taxation, but also with important cross-governmental responsibilities for delivering on our key priorities. I know that uh, she will prove a very worthy successor to John Swinney. Shona will naturally work very, very closely with Neil Gray, whom I appointed Cabinet Secretary for Wellbeing, the Wellbeing Economy for Fair Work and Energy. For a number of years, Neil served as the SNP Westminster Social Justice spokesperson, taking a leading role on issues such as employment, such as fair work and pensions. Most recently, of course, as a Scottish Government Minister, he worked on our Ukrainian resettlement programme with partners in local government, the third sector and the UK Government. I know Neil will undoubtedly bring that same level of energy and effectiveness to the work of supporting our wellbeing economy. The task, of course, goes hand in hand with our plans to achieve net zero. Uh, Mary McAllen will be at the forefront of those efforts as Cabinet Secretary for Net Zero and Just Transition. Uh, by common consent, I think it's fair to say, uh, Mary has done sterling work as an Environment Minister, ensuring greater protections for our natural environment. She's a passionate advocate for a just transition at home, climate justice uh, overseas. And I know uh, she will be a huge asset for the government in her new role. I'm also seeking Parliament's approval of the appointment of Jenny Goruth as a minister. Being transport minister is a tough brief. I know that only too well. But Jenny has overseen the taking into public ownership of ScotRail and driven further progress in the decarbonisation of our transport system. Before entering politics, Jenny was, of course, a secondary school teacher, and I know that will stand her in very good stead as Scotland's next education secretary. Uh, finally, I have asked Angela Constance to be Cabinet Secretary for Justice um, and, and Home Affairs, and Angela brings significant ministerial experience to this role. Most recently, she has been working tirelessly to reduce drug deaths in Scotland, which will continue to be a central priority for this government before entering politics. Angela worked at the front line of our criminal justice system as a prison social worker. I have no doubt at all that Angela's depth of experience will be of huge value as she takes forward the government's criminal justice reforms. These are the cabinet appointments which require parliamentary approval. I have also reappointed a number of existing cabinet secretaries. Michael Matheson will have responsibility for NHS recovery, for health and for social care. As a former occupational therapist and a highly effective minister, health minister in his, uh, earlier in his political career, Michael is very well placed to take on what is a crucial role for this government. I am very pleased that uh, Shirley Ann Somerville will lead on social justice, a central priority for this government. Angus Robertson will continue as Cabinet Secretary for Constitution, External Affairs and Culture, and Mary Goujon will remain at Rural Affairs. Presiding officer, I will now turn to junior ministerial appointments, for which I am seeking Parliament's approval. Again, there are a number of new faces. Siobhan Brown has performed admirably as convener of the Parliament's COVID-19 Recovery Committee. I have now asked Siobhan to support Angela Constance as Minister for Victims and Community Safety. Since being elected, Jenny Minto has been an exceptionally active member of this Parliament, contributing to the work of three committees and no fewer than 15 cross-party groups. I know she will bring that similar work ethic to the role of Minister for Public Health and Women's Health. As convener of the Social Justice and Social Security Committee, Natalie Dawn has brought a laser-like focus to one of the Parliament's most important priorities, supporting those who need it the most. She will continue to do that in her new role as Minister for Children and Young People and for keeping the promise. Meanwhile, Natalie's deputy convener, uh, Emma Roddick, will become Minister for Equalities, for Migration and Refugees. Emma will also, uh, I think, become the youngest ever minister to be appointed in the Scottish Government. But she has proven that she is more than ready for that responsibility. Paul McLennan is set to become Housing Minister, and he brings a significant, quite a varied uh, range of professional and political experience to his new post, including through his role in local government and his time in the local government housing and planning committee. 
Gillian Martin will become the new Energy Minister. Before she became an MSP in the North East of Scotland, she spent many years working in the, our vital oil and gas industry. Elsewhere on the team, Joe Fitzpatrick has substantial previous experience as a minister. I am pleased that he has agreed to return as Minister for Local Government Empowerment and Planning. Graham Day was also an excellent minister previously. He will return to government with the responsibilities for further and higher education. He will also resume his previous role of Veterans Minister. A number of current junior ministers will remain in government, some in existing portfolios, some will move to new portfolios. In particular, in line with the Butte House Agreement, I am pleased Patrick Harvey and Lorna Slater will also continue in their ministerial roles. The partnership between my party and the Scottish Green Party has brought significant benefit to the government in Scotland, but also to our country as a whole. And the fact that it upsets some in this chamber so much tells me yep. it's absolutely the right appointments to make. Yeah. Presiding officer, the team I am presenting to Parliament combines Thank fresh you talent members. with proven ability. It's a team to help Scotland seize the opportunities to meet the challenges that are very much before us. And can I assure the Chamber that each member is ready, they are eager to get on with the work of delivering for the people of this country. Therefore, Presiding Officer, it gives me great pleasure to move the motions in my name. Thank you. I now call on Craig Hoy. Uh, thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. On behalf of the Opposition, I congratulate the First Minister and his new ministerial team. Humza Yusuf has made history this week, and we offer him our very best wishes. And if Parliament confirms his administration today, I want to say good luck to his new ministers, because judging by his performance at First Minister's questions, they're certainly going yep. to need it. Yep. And, can I particularly, and can I particularly welcome Shona Robertson to the role of Deputy First Minister. Our country is now run by a woman who represents Dundee and by a man who lives there. It's a long way, First Minister, from Brody Ferry to Butte House. Presiding officer, I don't know what experience the First Minister has of assembling flat pack furniture, but um, even Christine Graham, I think, would have been surprised at just how quickly his cabinet fell apart uh, the other day. Mr Yusuf said he wanted to build a cabinet and a government of all the talents, yet this translates into Kate Forbes, this translates into Kate Forbes leaving the government whilst Lorna Slater is wel welcomed back into his ministerial yeah. team. Presiding officer, at division time, we will not be supporting the formation of this new government, which includes a minister for independence who, in a cost of living crisis, will be earning £100,000 a year. This is a cabinet, this is a cabinet and a government cast in Humza Yusuf's image. Failed continuity ministers appointed by a failed Excuse me, continuity Mr. Hoy, first um, minister. Can we just hear the member who is standing to speak? Thank you. Mr. Hoy, do continue. A failed continuity ministers appointed by a failed continuity first minister. And whilst we're talking about image, there is something that I've noticed that is a little bit different about the first minister this week. Is it the hair? Uh, is it the suit? But I think, and I sense, that there is a makeover in the making. And we know that Humza Yusuf likes to dress for the occasion. A, a Scott Rail hat when he's driving a train. A surgical scrubs in a hospital. A hard hat on a building site. Now, some in the press gallery have likened him to Mr Bean. But it's increasingly clear it's not Mr Bean, it's Mr Ben. Now, those of us who are old enough to remember that Mr Ben had many costumes. He emerged... Thank you, members. He emerged... Mr Ben, those of us who are old enough to remember, emerged as a zookeeper, a pirate and, of course, as a clown. And as the First Minister assembled his new government, there was soul-searching uh, amongst some of the longer-serving SNP MSPs, the dispossessed and the never-possessed. Emma Harper, Willie Coffey, Colin Beatty, Stuart McMillan, James Dornan, John Mason and, of course, Kenny Gibson all scratching their heads, all asking how someone with such obvious limitations had reached the highest office in the land, especially when they had failed to reach the first rung on the ministerial ladder. And sadly, there is no room in his government for his leadership, Ash Regan. Snubbed and no doubt reconsidering where she'd like to stick her independence thermometer. Looking to the, <laughs> looking to the back benches, I note the absence of the former First Minister. She will, though, be a very powerful backseat driver. 
And I remind the First Minister that Nicola is taking driving lessons, so I hope he doesn't get too comfortable behind the wheel. And when she passes her test, as I am sure she will, I hope that the First Minister will be the first to offer his congratulations and also to remind her of the importance of car insurance. Yep. <laughs> Presiding, officer, <laughs> Presiding officer, Scotland's new First Minister cannot simply airbrush away the criticisms levelled by his colleagues. Kate Forbes was correct. Continuity won't cut it, but it is continuity which is running through the core of his cabinet. And the only change, the only substantive change, is on NHS recovery. And this is a frank admission of the failure of the pre previous yeah. holder yeah. of that office. <laughs> presiding, officer, presiding officer, to govern is to choose. Whom the Yusuf wants to be the first activist? And whom the Yusuf wants to be the first activist? Wants to be the, he wants to be the first activist. And at Let's the same hear time, Mr. Hoy, please. And at the same time, and at the same time, he wants to be the first minister for all of Scotland. But I say this to him: he cannot be both. He has to be one, or has to be the other. We all know that tough choices will have to be made by his government, but I fear that this SNP Green coalition is no more than more of the same. The same misplaced priorities, the same failed ministers, and while for the sake of the country we wish this government well, we will not be voting for it this evening. Thank you. I now call on Neil Bibby. Uh, thank you, President Officer. On behalf of Scottish Labour, I would like to welcome colleagues who are new to their places on the government benches. A special mention to Natalie Don, who I believe will make history by becoming the first former Grave High School pupil to become a minister, and I hope she's not the last. Uh, I'm sincere in wishing them all well. On Monday, Team Humza was disbanded, and we were promised we would get Team SNP today, although I have to say it does look an awful like. Team Humza. And despite over 40 per cent of SNP MSPs now being ministers, we actually have more Green ministers in this government than ministers who, in the end, publicly backed Kate Forbes or Ash Regan. And at the top of the ticket, it does look a lot like Team Nicola without Nicola. We've got Michael Matheson at NHS Recovery, presumably to help the health service recover from the former health secretary. Also, a government now without Kate Forbes, Ivan McKee, Ben McPherson, Claire Hawhey, and even the SNP's deputy leader, Keith Brown. I wish them all well on the back benches. There is life after ministerial office. Despite these departures, we now have the biggest devolved government ever with 28 ministers. A ministerial salary bill of nearly £3 million a year now being footed by the taxpayer. President Officer, we will oppose the appointments today. To be clear, not because of any personal objection to any individuals, but because we believe the change Scotland needs is not bigger government, but better government. We don't believe the public will have confidence in replacing the most incompetent and wasteful administration in the history of devolution with an even bigger one. But we recognise they will be appointed today. They will be charged with the responsibility and their opportunity, one I hope they will grasp. Because today, after 5,810 days of the SNP in power. So many people in Scotland need them to do their job. The children and young people who hope for a better life but fear their potential won't be realised. Older people and the ill living with chronic conditions who find a health service which just doesn't have the time and resources to help. The vulnerable people living with drug problems who are seeing those that die around them higher than any numbers in any other part of Europe. The hard-working people doing difficult jobs who, at the end of the shift, are somehow struggling to make ends meet. Islanders who are just looking for some ferries, not another ferries minister. I wish the ministers well. Your predecessors have bequeathed you an overflowing entry. But why are we here unless we believe we can do something about it? The Scottish Labour benches will work with ministers on the issues I mentioned, provided they are prepared to roll up their sleeves and want to find practical solutions to Scottish problems. The question is, will they? The truth is, today Scotland stands at a crossroads. The salmon sturgeon era is over, and there is an opportunity for something different and something better. Will this be a continuity cabinet, or do they have a group of people in office who are not prepared to accept mediocrity? Too many of these ministers' predecessors failed because their first loyalty was to the cause and not to the people of Scotland. They sought to exploit Scotland's problems rather than fix them. 
This approach was not only wrong, it failed. It failed to deliver independence and it failed the people of this country. Presiding officer, we are not naive. SNP ministers will still be united by a belief that independence is the best constitutional settlement for Scotland. I disagree, but I recognise their conviction. But I also hope they recognise that in this moment we should make this parliament work for the Scottish people. Nicola Sturgeon can celebrate her eight election victories and her record as Scotland's longest serving First Minister. They are great achievements, yet I believe she will come to regret the road not taken. Putting government and parliament to work as a policy engine which can deliver real change for Scots. Presiding officer, one of those not being appointed today said continuity won't cut it. We agree. People in Scotland are hungry for change. Scottish Labour is hungry for change. And I hope the ministers that are appointed today are too. Thank you. I now call on Julian Mackay. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I want to start by congratulating Hamza Youssef on his appointment as First Minister. As a health spokesperson, I have enjoyed working with him and hope that the incoming health team will be as good to work with as he was. Thank you to all of those departing Cabinet and Ministerial Office who have worked with us constructively over the last 18 months. We hugely value your contribution to our collective work. I am obviously delighted to see Patrick Harvey and Lorna Slater reappointed. The Butte House Agreement has shown what we can achieve through collaborative politics and has seen key green policies put at the heart of government. I look forward to them getting stuck into unfinished business, including delivering permanent rent controls, creating our next national park, launching our desperately needed deposit return scheme, rolling out record-breaking funding for nature restoration and active travel, and of course, releasing more beavers into Scottish wetlands. No one will be surprised to hear how relieved I am that I get to keep George Adam with me in Bureau. Not only has he provided me with a lot of support, I wouldn't wish our terrible chat on anyone else. I can't, of course, gloss over Emma Roddick's appointment. She's absolutely smashed everything she has turned her hand to. Well done. Your mammy would be proud. With the outrage at First Minister's questions earlier today, I'm sure Jamie Hepburn is looking forward to seeing who the opposition parties will appoint as their shadow minister for independence. <laughs> I am sure there will either be queues out the door or it will be used as the party naughty step. <laughs> Congratulations to each and every one of you on your appointment, whether this is the first time or whether you are moving to a new role. This is a fresh start in government, but already we are seeing the same old rhetoric creeping in from other parties. I was hopeful that we would come to a place of agreeing we need to elevate our debate over the past couple of weeks, disagree on the substance, not the people. We correctly call out the abuse that each other receive on social media, agree it's terrible, and then go right back to lobbying, to lobbying the same personal attacks and insults. We also all rightly, at the start of this Parliament, praised ourselves for doing better on making the Parliament more representative of the outside world. This is the first female majority cabinet, the first Muslim first minister, a cabinet that has young politicians and the youngest member of this chamber is a minister. Every International Women's Day, we see how we need to encourage women into politics, more people who have, different, uh, who have experiences that are different to ourselves. And how on earth are we going to do that when we're calling people flops and b list before their names are even on the office doors, before they've had a chance to pass one policy? So can we please think and practice what we preach? By all, my, uh, by all means, scrutinise and debate where things have gone wrong, but talk about the ideas and argue why yours is better, not why you believe someone is any of the things that have been attributed to members of this Parliament in recent weeks. Finally, to all the new Ministers and Cabinet Secretaries, with the Butte House Agreement, we are here to offer constructive input and help and push you further, but we are also here to support. We have achieved a lot, but there is so much more to do. Delivering a full ban on conversion practices and bringing in safe access zones to abortion clinics. Developing the bold new climate plan we desperately need if we have any chance of tackling the climate emergency. And beginning the long, slow task of restoring our land and seas through highly protected marine areas and ongoing nature restoration work. We are a team making Scotland better, and we have made progress on that over the last 18 months of the agreement. 
I know that all of your families and friends will be so proud of you all, and I can't wait to see what we achieve together. Thank you. I now call on Alex Cole Hamilton. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Presiding Officer. Presiding Officer, it is a great thing to serve your country in any way, but especially from ministerial office. I, I want to take a moment to congratulate those who have been so elevated today, and I offer thanks as well uh, for the service of those leaving office today. Um, whilst we will not support these appointments, for reasons I will come on to, I bear none of the appointments today personal animosity. I think that, in the el eloquent words of Gillian Mackay, is important to state. Um, Presiding officer, Nicola Sturgeon was right as, when she did so to appoint a dedicated mental health minister in 2016. It was at the request of my party, the Scottish Liberal Democrats, but that was downgraded in 2021 when that minister was asked to cover social care too. Is it any wonder that we have seen record delayed discharges in the mess that are the plans for ministerial takeover of social care? And mental health is further being downgraded today because now sport is being added to that portfolio too. Another responsibility, hugely important in its own right. But mental health deserves better than to be sandwiched and squeezed between these other two portfolios. We've just heard in First Minister's questions from Anas Sarwar about children waiting longer for, for care and treatment than Humza Yusuf served as Health Secretary. That is shocking. There is so much unmet need out there. Mental health treatment targets have never been achieved, not once, for either children or adults since they were introduced in 2014. Nicola Sturgeon, Shona Robertson, Jean Freeman, Maureen Watt, Claire Hawhey, Kevin Stewart, and yes, Humza Yusuf, all of them talked a good game on mental health in this chamber, but none of them have ever met their promise to the children and adults waiting years to be seen. And this winter, they cut £50 million from mental health, apparently oblivious to the crisis at our doors. By their actions, shall you know them. Is it any wonder, then, where there is no dedicated champion for mental health at the heart of government, making the case for investment, making the case for more staff? Is it any wonder that this government is failing Scotland on mental health? There could have been a dedicated mental health minister, a champion for the thousands of Scots waiting, but instead, the First Minister has expanded his ministerial team, as we've heard now, the biggest in the devolution era, to create an office of, for the Minister for Independence. That is time, money, energy, a team of expert civil servants that could have focused on mental health. Remember, Presiding Officer, Humza Yusuf made a personal promise to clear those waiting lists, those mental health waiting lists, by this March. Look at the calendar. We are here, and the SNP are nowhere. Humza Yusuf said he would be the leader for all of Scotland, but I don't see any evidence that he will be a First Minister for those waiting for that care and for that treatment. And the appointment of a Minister for Independence is an insult to the thousands of people that the Nationalists have failed. It is proof of the disconnect between the focus of the governing parties and the needs and interests of this country. Scottish Liberal Democrats would reverse the cuts and re-establish that dedicated mental health minister. We would create mental health beds for young people in all parts of Scotland when there are none north of Dundee. We would ramp up training so that every workplace can benefit from a mental health first aider. That's how Liberal Democrats would create a properly funded, world-beating system to tackle Scotland's mental health crisis. That's a blueprint which shows what fresh thinking could achieve, why we need a change in government, why it is essential that Liberal Democrats are part of what's next. Now, while we oppose their appointment this afternoon, I do want to finish by wishing them good fortune, not least because we all have to live here and we all have to deal with the consequences of their decisions. So I ask them to make good choices. As Abraham Lincoln said, put your feet in the right places and stand firm. That said, it's okay to get things wrong, but have the grace to admit when you are wrong and then to listen to the voices from beyond your benches that may offer you a pathway through. Thank you. Thank you. And I call on the First Minister to respond. I think I can be uh, relatively brief uh, in my responses. Uh, can I say to uh, Craig Hoy, a good start might be to know my name. Uh, it is uh, Hamza Yusuf, not Humza Yusuf. Um, but with such thorough preparations like that, 
probably tells you why he's languishing in the opposition benches, uh, presiding officer. Lots of tips, lots of calls from right across the chamber. Bring back uh, Jackson Carlo. I saw he was yeah, yeah, yeah. he was busy <laughs> busy looking at his shoes at that point. Um, I, I, I would say to Craig Coyne, maybe a more serious point. Uh, I have to say, um, in my time in this parliament. I have often had uh, people like Craig Hoy tell me I'm not good enough. They've told me that when I became the first person of colour to win a constituency seat. They told me that when I became the first person of colour to be in government. They told me that when I've been the first person of colour to be appointed to cabinet. And I'm not surprised they tell me that when I've become the first person yeah. of colour yeah. to be the first minister of Scotland. It's because I do not listen to the people like Craig Hoy yeah. and the Conservative yeah. benches. Yeah. And the Conservative benches that I've been able to achieve what I have. Uh, Neil, Bibby, Neil Bibby was uh, right to put emphasis on working together in the national interest and where there are constructive ideas, he will find that this government's uh, door, my door, will always be open for when we can come together. Uh, where there are good ideas, uh, and I say that not just when we are discussing the budget, but right throughout any government portfolio area, you will find uh, my door uh, open. Uh, Gillian Mackay, uh, and I think, made the best speech of uh, the afternoon, uh, and I was delighted to hear uh, from her about the points about corrosive political discourse, because we all agree. I mean, all of us have made statements about the corrosive nature of political debate. And actually, our cooperation with the Green Party is a very good demonstration of how we can do grown-up politics, where, of course, the Green Party, although our partners, will push us to go further, will sometimes push back. But we will make sure that we work in that spirit of cooperation and what is, again, in the best interest uh, of the country. On Alex Cole Hamilton's point, I'm, I'm sorry that he can't see the link between social care, mental wellbeing and indeed sport. You speak to many of our sporting organisations about the great work that they do to help and aid those with mental health challenges uh, and of course you will see that there's a natural interlinkage including with social care on many of these issues um, and it's quite something I have to say uh, to be told by the smallest party in Parliament that we need to reflect the priorities of the people a little <laughs> bit better. Um, can I thank opposition members for their uh, remarks? Uh, this is a significant reshuffle. The new team is very much a changing of the guard. We've had, I know, a few laughs this afternoon, even at our expense, but everyone here agrees that when the dust settles, all of these appointments have an exceptionally important job to do. I'm sure that all members will wish them well in the new post, and on behalf of all ministers, I promise that we will do our best to work constructively with MSPs to deliver for the people that we all represent. And I hope that Parliament backs my motion today so we can get down to work. Thank you. There are two questions to be put. The first is that motion 8469 in the name of Hamza Youssef on a First Minister's appointment of Scottish Ministers be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. The Parliament is not agreed, therefore we will move to a vote and there will be a short suspension to allow members to access the digital voting system. Today's
Thank you. The question is that motion 8469 in the name of Hamza Youssef on First Minister's appointment of Scottish Ministers be agreed and members should cast their votes now. The vote is closed. Point of order, Pam Duncan Glancy. Sorry, President Officer, I was too early there. Um, the app wouldn't connect. Um, I would have voted no. Thank you, Ms. Duncan Glancy. We'll ensure that's recorded. The result of the vote on motion 8469 in the name of Hamza Youssef is yes 71, no 56. There were no abstentions. The motion is therefore agreed. Thank you. The next question is that motion 8470 in the name of Hamza Youssef on First Minister's appointment of junior Scottish Ministers be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. The Parliament is not agreed, therefore we will move to a vote and members should cast their votes now. The vote is closed. The result of the vote on motion 8470 in the name of Hamza Youssef is yes 71, no 56. There were no abstentions. The motion is therefore agreed. And as the Parliament has agreed to the First Minister's recommendations, he may now invite His Majesty to approve the appointments. It is now time to move on to the next item of business. Thank you. <laughs>